For once, the legend is accurate. I thought of the title, uh, don't ask what I was doing at the time, and I had nothing to go with it. But Bob Block, who wrote Psycho, and has started to write little horror vignettes when he was three years old, I think his mother would give him a piece of paper, or perhaps a crayons, and instead of writing daddy or mommy, he would write vampire. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Max Rosenberg. I met Robert, I knew his agent, and this was before Psycho, and I liked Bob, he was a lovely man. I think that I did more of the block stories than anybody else. Bob had written thousands and thousands of stories, and I think I spent a year fruitlessly going through all of those stories until I picked out the five that we squeezed into the title, House of Drip Blood. If I found a story about somebody who lived in a house, or if I could adapt it to somebody living in a house and terrible things happen, whether it's a waxwork story, I think in terms of the images. When I read the one story where I knew that Peter Cushing's head had ended up like Salome's on a, on a plate, that was all I was interested in, was just in the image. In Sweets for the Sweet, all I wanted was the little girl and the wax doll. By the way, when my girls grew up, I never let them have dolls. I was afraid that story did it. Give me that doll. Chloe Franks played the same role in about five different pictures. She played the bad seed in every one of these pictures. I imagine when she went home at night, her parents used to cringe in the corner, say, don't, watch it, don't, don't upset her. Afraid of a child? She's not just a child, she's evil. Every picture was about a bad guy that ends up badly off. Perhaps you understand the secret of this house now, precisely. It reflects the personality of whoever lives in it and treats him accordingly. I hope it finds a proper tenant soon. Perhaps you would like it. There's nothing to be afraid of, if you're the right sort of person. In old-fashioned terms, I did everything. In very old-fashioned terms. That's why I'm so tired now. I finance in so many different ways that it's a bore even to talk about it. The obvious ones were the major companies. The less obvious ones were the so-called famous tax shelters, although I never set up a deal that I didn't think would be fiscally and financially responsible. I took OPM, other people's money, very seriously. Can you talk a little bit about the composer, Michael Dress, did a wonderful score for the film. It's, it's even actually a little bit more sort of avant-garde and experimental, certainly yeah. in the beginning, than a lot of the horror scores you well, hear. Well, we used, when we used Elizabeth Lucian's or Michael Dress, we knew we were dealing with people who were going to take an avant-garde approach to the music, and they did. I took an avant-garde approach to producing. I tried to save money. I had a lovely partner. You know, the legend was that I was the outside man, he was the inside man, it wasn't true. I did everything and it was fun because it gave me a chance to develop the technique that we had. The Amicus pictures were very much teaching films. Now, where did the name Amicus films come from? Uh, it comes from the Latin word meaning friends. What should we call the company, enemies? <laughs> Amicus had a reputation for being gentle, courteous, and above all, respectful of talent. None of that was true, but all of it seemed to work. No, no, Carla. Carla, don't put that on. You'll turn into a vampire. Carla, Carla, please. We loved your film so much, we wanted you to become one of us forever. Welcome to the club. 
If they were stage actors, they were double dipping. They would work in the theater at night and work for me in the daytime. And the truth of the matter is that we did start Dick Lester and Bill Bain. There are at least four other directors outside of Bain and, and Lester, including Waris Hussein, that worked for me, that turned out later on to become rather important directors. Peter Duffel, for one, who did House of Drip Blood, went on to do The Far Pavilions, which is one of the classic English miniseries. So I would say that out of the 27 amicus pictures, at least six of them were done by, well, more. Nine were done by first-time directors. Three directors were so untalented that later they got a job directing traffic. But six of them were very good. The theory was that all the horror should be portrayed off stage. And the comedy was because life is a comedy. I think if I were a young man, I would hesitate to enter the industry. And I entered it with a high heart and fond hopes. 